What's up, peeps? All right, so happy Tuesday. And yes, if you haven't noticed, I'm sporting a new look. Why? Because I can. And I cannot spread this video on Facebook, but you guys can. But I am in Facebook jail for the next, well, for three days. Well, because some asshole called me the C word, so I told him to go F himself. Well, sure enough, Facebook got me, and I'm now in Facebook jail for, I think I have like 21 hours left. But I'll be back tomorrow, and I know my hair looks weird, though, because I have a headset on. It's really kind of hard working with a big, bulky headset, and try to make your hair look pretty, so just deal with it. But I am doing two videos tonight. The first one is MAM related, and the second one has nothing to do with MAM, but I felt compelled to do it because I have to let off some steam. And yes, everything is fine with me and my boyfriend. I love him to death. I will marry him one day. But dating a gamer is fucking the hardest thing I've ever done. Like a true gamer. And a lot of people ask me, like, why would you start gaming? Why? Because if you can't beat them, join them. So my second video that I'm going to post tonight is really just me letting off steam. But this one is about MAM. So I know that not everybody is in like the thousand groups that I'm in. So I wanted to bring you guys this. I will try to post a link. Hopefully Facebook will let me at least post the link because I can't even like a fucking comment. So back on August, and it was posted by Tracy in one of the Stephen Avery groups. And I apologize, I can't remember which group it is because I've belonged to like 30 of them. So, but it was a letter that was posted. I'm not even sure who posted it. I think it may be the Crescent posted it. And I'm totally not sure how they even got a hold of it. But it was a letter written to Judge Fox from Brendan on August 5th of 2006. Now, let me just state that I don't know about you guys, but there has been so much wonder about what really happened. Because nobody even knows. And it's kind of like, how are we supposed to know what really happened when we have no fucking clue? Because it's we've never gotten a straight story out of anybody. But I honestly believe in my heart of hearts, like, this is what really happened. So without further ado, here I go. Dear Judge Jerome Fox, hello. I was writing to you a while back, but I didn't have a pencil. The thing I was going to write to you was that all of my statements I gave to investigators are not the truth. The truth is that me and my brother Blaine came home from school at 3.45 p.m., about and walked down the road to our house but while me and blame were walking down the road we talked about who would get to use the phone to call our friends to see who would go trick-or-treating so blaine called his friend and while he was calling him i went to my bedroom and played playstation 2 until my mom came home between 5 and 5 30. then when she left blaine got picked up by his friend's mom i was in the living room watching tv until i got a call at 6 p.m from blaine's boss and I told him that Blaine went trick-or-treating with his friend. Then I watched some more TV until 7 when the phone rang. And it was Steven. And he asked me if I wanted to come to the bonfire. And I did. Then we drove the golf cart around my mom's yard to find garbage and junk. We found a van seat, some wood, some tires, and a cabinet. And me and Steven put the stuff on the fire. And by that time, it was around 9 p.m. And my mom came home and called Steven on his cell phone and asked if I had a jacket or a sweater on and told Steven that I was to be home by 10 o'clock. So me and Stephen was standing by the fire until 10 p.m. or close to it. Then I went home and talked to my mom about Scott's mom in the hospital and asked if Scott's mom is all right. Then I went to bed and got some sleep for the next day of school. So that is what really happened. And my brother Blaine knows that I was home at 4 p.m. Sincerely, Brendan Dassey. P.S. Me and my mom think you are a good judge. Thank you for your time. All right. I was heart wrenching when I read it. Because I felt like finally, we finally got a true story. And I know there's a lot of haters out there saying, oh, he's guilty. He did this, he did that. No, he didn't. Because honestly, I believe that. I am not a stupid person. I do not believe things easily. And when I read that, I honestly, truly believed it. But on top of believing it, by the way, I got my ping pong back. Yeah, I got another one. Both sides and a, and a thing. Yes, I broke a nail. Anyway, so I really, truly believed that that was Brendan's story. Now, if you think, oh, you're a fucking idiot, and that's, you know, Brendan just wrote that because he was in jail. Let me show you where you're wrong. First off, from what I remember, and again, this is going by memory, so if I'm a tad bit off, don't kill me for it, but by memory, uh, Scotty went to pick up Barb around 5 o'clock. And 
Barb said that she came home around 5 or 5.30 and Scotty picked her up. That coincides with what Brendan just said. Now remember, this was written in August 5th of 2006. He then, to say, he then ventures to say that it was around 9 that his mom came home. Scott claims that he dropped her off somewhere between 8 and 9. I know there was some kind of discrepancy with time zones or it's uh, clocks back or whatever, but regardless, if you think about the testimony that has happened, I distinctly remember Scott saying that him and Brenda were in a fire. It was somewhere between 8 and 9, I believe. Um, I do remember someone stating in testimony that Brendan had called on Stephen's cell phone. That was also when Scotty somehow didn't even know who was standing there and didn't realize that it was Brendan, but that's a whole nother video. I'm not getting into Scott. I haven't fucked with him in months, but the times that Brendan wrote do match up with other times that I remember. And I thought that was really, really important. Because that's what we need. We need times to match up. And being that letter was written that long ago, and it coincides with everything, or even if it was some lies in other people's testimony, that's pretty much what Brendan said from the beginning. And that's why I totally believe it, because it does coincide with other people's stories. So, Judge Fox, what the fuck were you thinking? And you should really, truly be ashamed of yourself for everything that you let happen in your courtroom. I it, find it a complete travesty of justice. And speaking of train wrecks and travesty of justice, let's move on to Kratz. For everybody that thinks Kratz is honest, for anyone that thinks Kratz is respectable, that he is any fuck of an attorney, he's a piece of shit. Not only was he barred from his own state, he, yes, he was barred for a minute. Well, all right, let me rephrase that. He wasn't barred, but he was not allowed to practice law under the state guidelines. He was fired. Do you know how hard it is to get fired after you win a case as big as Avery's? But he did get fired. Why? Because he was diagnosed, well, everything he did, obviously. But he's a diagnosed narcissist. When you are a diagnosed narcissist, guess what? You are a fucking liar. He, Mr. You know, Mr. Perfect, and, oh, I'm worth $300,000, and I have a big house, and my ping pong broke again. I gotta stop playing with this fucking thing. Now it has no head. Um, when you're in Kratz's position, and you can't even pay $25,000, look, I read it. That man was whining over $25,000. Oh, I can't pay it. I'm not supposed to pay it. His own fucking peers told him, get over it. You are paying it. And I don't even know if he ever did, but he is such a piece of shit. I pity anybody that believes Kratz. He's not only unethical, he is non-logical. He's a fucking blatant liar and I truly, truly pity anybody that believes him. I may read his book if someone gives it to me, because I certainly wouldn't give that man a fucking penny. But I actually heard it's not even worth it. I heard it sucks. I heard it's just full of typical lies. And so now that I got that out of my system, the third thing I want to say is, Zellner, where the fuck is the evidence? I've been hearing since January that you have evidence to release him. My nose is itching. Maybe that means I'm going to be coming to money. But come on, Zellner, it's been too long. You've been saying for months and a year and a half, it's been a year and a half that you have evidence to set him free. So why is he still in jail? I'm frustrated. It's And a lot of people are frustrated. I'm not doubting you. I think you're an amazing attorney with like 18 convictions under your belt that you overturned. And that is awesome. Why is this taking so long? I understand why Brendan's taking so long because... He has to go through the appeal process, but we are waiting for testing for so long. And last August, you said that you had tests to prove he was innocent. Where are they? I don't care who the real killer is. Just get the innocent kids out of jail. Not innocent kids, because they're fucking men already. But I think that's what we all want. We just want them out of jail. So that's all I have for you guys. 
And who knows, maybe my next video I'll be sporting a new look. Maybe I'll have blue hair. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I can't change that fast. So I hope you guys have an awesome night. And don't forget to check out my second video, which is all about why dating a gamer sucks. And subscribe to my other videos. Make sure you watch. Um, what else? And try to pass this around on Facebook because I cancel tomorrow until I'm out of jail. And that's all I got for you guys. Have a great night. Peace out.